Hiya. Welcome back to Moonwatch. Welcome if you're new too. I'm Hini, a spiritual astrologer. Check out the um, description below if you're interested in a reading with me. And if you like my content, do consider giving this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, these things I'm going to talk about in this video are just my takes and reflections and you're always your own person at the end of the day. So as always, please take what resonates and feel free to leave the rest. The new moon in Capricorn. This is officially occurring on January 13th, 2021, strongest between 5, 6 a.m. UK time. I do want to say that the next bunch of new and full moons up until around May, June 2021 are all within this fallout context of the eclipses that we had back in late November, December 2020. This is in the context of the nodes as well with that full moon in Gemini conjuncting the north node and the new moon in Sagittarius conjuncting the south node. In short, illuminating for us huge realizations about the end of a chapter, huge fresh feelings about knowing mm, that the chapter, that that chapter has um, to be properly closed if we are to progress to start over again. It was, you know, realizing where we need to go and then also realizing with the new moon what we need to let go of, kicking off an up to six month long period of closing doors to empty rooms and allowing that decay, which Capricorn reminds us of right now, to just be. Alrighty, briefly then, a new moon, if you uh, didn't know, is marking a moment of intensity and it doesn't necessarily have to be in the or, or on the exact date of January 13th. And these marker moments of new moons are very often associated with setting new intentions. As I've been saying recently though, we are in the beginning of the end and we're in this eclipse fallout period and so my humble feeling of the way to ride this lunar energy is to keep any new intention within the context of the originally foreseen new chapter and not to stray off the charts as Aquarian energy is going to increasingly tempt us to do so. <laughs> this is not helped either by the fact that we are in the tricky season of the devil and by the fact that the moon is a very apparently fickle but definitely quickly receptive archetype. So there's a sense here generally of ensuring you're serious about whatever shiny new thing might come up um, to inspire you <laughs> around this new moon. We might be wise to reflect on intention versus intensity at this time, ensuring that with this new moon energy we're not trying to jump right to airy season from one cardinal point to another without appreciating those two thick chapters of the book that are still to come, aka Aquarius and Pisces seasons. I do also want to say that we all have free will as well and that this new moon might mean more, it might mean less to you, depending on whatever else is going on for you and for you in your chart, your birth chart. And so you don't have to feel compelled to commit to anything dramatic unless it really is like deep down calling you and unless it really does touch on who and what you authentically are. So this new moon <laughs> is gonna be conjunct Pluto with Venus behind. Check out, by the way, my latest stream on this Venus and Capricorn transit, um, if you're interested. What this says to me is that, yes, the vibes get more serious, as in we have to be more serious while we're also quickly learning to adapt to new things and exciting possibilities. We're having to get down to business now in some way as well. So it is perhaps this mix of excitement, but also a fear of this climb that still has to be completed. By this point in Capricorn season, we will 
um, be looking up at the observatory high above. And this is an excitement uh, that we're sort of feeling from the promise of Aquarius this season. Aquarius often associated with energies of joining the dots. We already are aware that soon we'll be sat in that observatory looking through the telescope and really seeing the constellations of our new chapter for what it really is. We know that it's about to all make sense, but it's kind of like Jupiter and Hermes are way ahead of us telling us to hurry up because there's all this new knowledge, yet we're still having to keep our gait a bit measured. Also kind of thinking to ourselves, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> we also then have this mysterious in conjunction or quincunx that this new moon makes to the retrograding north node in Gemini. This definitely and quite immediately tells me that we need to, again, ensure that our new feelings are still in tandem with where we're supposed to be going, that nothing is on some power-driven whim, that nothing is merely there as a superficial or status quo quick fix impulse either. At the same time, it has to be that we are going where we're going with um, a certain lightness and youthfulness and not getting like righteous or snobbish about this new chapter vision of ours. It might even be a really good idea to make this new moon intention, if you are an intention setter, uh, to make it the same as your last new moon intention which was in Sagittarius so that you are you know consciously continuing to work on what you said you would and also that you're open to approaching that same goal with different energies and in different climes. Also with this powerful new moon in Capricorn um, made by, by the way very intense by Pluto right because they're conjunct they're very close um, it's good to just keep digging. Some things don't yet make sense to us and that's okay. Some things are still buried deep in the sand but there's actually a kind of power in knowing that you'll get there eventually. You will unearth more later. It's kind of like you know when you were a kid and an older relative tells you that they have a gift for you or some surprise to show you but like the place they're taking you to or like the shape of that wrapped gift. It doesn't like correlate with what you were expecting or hoping for, but later the magic unfolds and you can be very pleasantly surprised. So for a lot of us, these things uh, also, these things that we dig up later, they're gonna be quite like humble and quiet, but also like pleasant or pleasantly surprising. And with the luminaries, which is the sun and the moon, being so close to Pluto at this time, we also have to remember the real truth of things, to be aware <laughs> of the hype or the zeal of things, because Pluto is always happy to send us on some obsessive errand that <laughs> in this season later doesn't really bring you much at all except your head sort of hanging in shame or your goat tail between the legs. <laughs> the overarching rat, the metal rat energies as well of course, would also want us to think twice before we um, open new doors to the unknown, especially if we haven't really finished closing those doors that I mentioned to those empty rooms. Empty rooms not only behind us but still right next to us and sometimes even in front of us. Remember that Venus is also here in Capricorn behind the bunch of planets in, which are also in Capricorn on this new moon. Remember Venus is here and so there's a slight increase of that seduction of the powerful and the hierarchical things. I would be aware of like any promotions or titles that you might be tempted to sort of snatch for yourself right away, like as soon as they're offered. But then like later you regret it because you forgot how much you don't actually like working there or you don't actually like your colleagues or like the workplace or whatever it is. Again, it's like asking ourselves, does the newness really resonate? Is this newness really true to us? So the moon itself <laughs> is pretty um, incredibly receptive, far quicker than Mercury, and I do think 
there'll be this very satisfyingly fresh reception of knowledge for us. This is learning about the stone on which everything has been already built and the relics and the remnants of past landmarks and monuments to your climb thus far. And yes, there's absolutely going to be, for some of us, some excitement about the destinations that are still quite far off, but very much on the agenda. And that agenda is what is driving us to continue, with caution, but to continue. <laughs> and I guess one of my final notes for this new moon um, would be that, you know, we do have Mars getting, at this time, ever closer to a strong conjunction with Uranus and Taurus. And I'm going to make a video tomorrow. <laughs> Um, on the Mars in Taurus, Mars entering Taurus, and that transit, but conjuncting Uranus as well, this is going to bring like even more intensification of the square ridge that's going on right now between Uranus and the stellium of planets in um, Aquarius, that's Mercury, Saturn and Jupiter right now, but later the other planets will join. Um, so I would say on a final note to check in with your intuition around the new moon and with Pluto there to be real about things, especially things that feel really new and intense and like exciting to you, to check in with yourself for a moment. Be real about the things before you move forward. Alrighty, well I hope this Moon Watch episode was insightful or helpful. Uh, do let us know in the comments which house or houses you have um, Capricorn in and let's talk about this new moon and how it might affect you. Thank you for watching and happy Monday Moon Day. Love yous.